Hi, and welcome to my Vorketh guide using melee. Now, Vorketh, I'm going to show you his attacks. Magic attack, the blue fireball. Range attack is a darker ball with bones out of it and a skull on it. Normal dragon fire attack. Venom dragon fire attack, this inflicts venom. Pink dragon fire attack, deactivates all your prayers. Deadly dragon fire attack, this is the one shot ball that you want to avoid. I'm going to show you during the fight. Acid pool attack, this is where you can wooks walk if you know how to do it. I'm going to record a separate guide on how to wooks walk for melee. And some of ice dragon fire attack. This is interesting since we're using melee. You need to use the spell Crumble Undead on the Zombified spawn. Since we're using melee, your magic attack bonus is probably quite low. If it is less than minus 65, which in my case I have minus 71, you need to bring a Slayer Staff and you need to choose Autocast spell Crumble Undead. Make sure you do that, otherwise you're dead. Because if your magic attack bonus is less than minus 65, your crumble undead won't hit anymore. Now, stats. Basically, the higher the better. The minimum you want is like 80 attack, 85 melee and 85 defense. And then pray around 74, 70. The higher the better. Gear. Most important, self emulate EI. This is the most important item, the game changer. Self emulate you can require by do. Require you can get by doing the quest Haunted Mine. Then, self emulate E you can get by finishing the mini quest Lair of Tarn Razalor. Then, you can use this diary on the self emulate and you have self emulate E. Self emulate EI you can. Imbue your self emulate E with Nightmare Zone points, 800k or Soul Wars tokens. Or you can use a scroll of imbuing purchased by or from Emir's Arena. If you don't have this item, I suggest don't fight Warcraft yet. This item is a game changer. No matter which attack style you're using, this is going to make your life a lot easier while fighting Warcraft. Now, gear or rest of the gear. Bring your best melee gear that is available. If you have Torva, bring Torva. If you have Bandos, bring Bandos. If you have Obsidian, bring Obsidian. That works as well. You can also bring some tanky gear like Barrows. That's fine. Best installed weapon, Dragon Hunter Lance. Dragon Hunter Lance. If you have it, bring it. You can bring Osmuntin's Fang, Gazri Rapier. If you don't have these, since they are kind of pricey, Zamorak and Hasta, 5 mil. I think that's kind of affordable, so maybe you can go with the Hasta. If you do not have the Hasta, you could also bring an Abbey Dagger, 2.2 mil. I guess that's fine. Offhand, you want to bring your best defender. And then as spec weapon, if you have, you can bring D-Claws, you can bring BGS or Dragon Warhammer to lower his defense. If you have it, not really necessary. Alright, so, as I said, make sure you have runes for Crumble Undead. And then you need a teleport to the closest bank. You need a bank teleport and you need a house teleport because... This is how it goes. Now, in order to get to Vorketh, I suggest you put your house in Relica. Put your house in Relica and then you have a house teleport. If you do this, go to settings, go to house options, teleport inside, turn it off. You're going to save some time because the loading screen always appears when you teleport inside. Now you want to turn this off so you're always outside. If you finished the Fremnik Elite Diaries, you can also use Fremnik Sea Boots 4. But in this guide or as an example, I'm going to use the Relica House Teleport option. Now I have a concave. I'm using concave for Relica House Teleport. Before we go, uh, inventory Divine Super Combat Potion. Anti Venom Plus and Extended Super Antifier. Really important. I like to bring three prayer po pots 
depending on how many kills you're able to get or you want to do you could bring more I think two or three are max however and then rest of your inventory food 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 all right now let's go to Relica before fighting Vorketh now this is the house portal you go north from it before fighting Vorketh right click your prayer icon and set up quick prayers you want to protect from magic and you want Pidey done this is really helpful for his pink dragon fire attack now you go north to Torfin. If you should die, you can just get your items back from him. You need to bring 100k, and that's how you reclaim your items. Then you right click, go to Unga Ale. That's the way to Vorketh. Now, these tiles are for Wooks walking. As I said, I'm going to record a separate guide for Wooks walking. If you enter Vorkev's pit, turn off running. This is important. Turn off running. Turn off running. Now, since we're using melee, it's a little special because Vorkev also has a melee attack that can hurt pretty bad. You can either... That's what I like to do. I just semi-AFK, just stand in front of him. But you could also time your attacks. Let's say you attack, he attacked you. You go one tile back, as soon as he shoots his, his attack, you attack again and go back, so that avoids him from using his melee attack. I like to tank it, then again I have Torva, you know, if you don't have it, you can time your attacks and dodge his melee attacks doing that. Now, without a further ado, let's drink our potions. Wake him up, activate our prayers, and let's go. So, ranging attack. That's the prayer deactivation attack, so that's why we set up quick prayers to simply reactivate it again. The green one was the venom attack. This is his normal magic attack. Ah, okay, the acid attack. This is where you can Wooks walk. As I said, I'm going to record a separate guide for Wooks walking. You just want to make sure you keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. Don't stop. Avoid the acid pools. Find a row or a line where there's no acid pool. And then you can just walk. If you do not know how to Wooks walk. Because you can keep dealing damage if you know how to Wooks walk. That's his ranging attack, as I mentioned earlier. Normal dragon fire, magic attack, useless. This is freezing attack. If he uses the freezing attack, you click the tile you're standing on because that interrupts your action and that interrupts or avoids you from attacking again and losing some ticks on the uh, zombified spawn. You click the tile that you're standing on when you're frozen, equip your slayer staff and Kill the zombified spawn. This is important. If it reaches you, you're dead. Okay, I guess I can do a little wooks walk here. <laughs> As I said, I'm going to record a guide, separate guide for wooks walking only. It's actually not super hard. I'm missing one attack, his ultra fireball that can one shot you if you do not pay attention. I'm waiting for it. Okay, uh, I'm going to wait for his attack. <laughs> I don't know why he's not doing it. Let's stay away so chances are higher. Okay, click the tile you're standing on, Slayer Staff, Zombified Spawn, left click, Crumble Undead, and you're good. Okay, can you please do your last attack? So I have it on video as well. There we go, the fireball. If he launches this fireball, you need to walk two tiles away from the one you're standing on. Immediately walk away. If you do not walk away, it can... I think it deals above 90 damage, so it basically one-shots you. Really important. Now, that's how you do Vorketh. This is one of the best money makers in the entire game. He's actually not too hard once you get the hang of it. Good luck, thank you for watching, I hope this helped and I hope to see you again in one of my next guides. Thank you, bye bye.